EP Biology, Third Quarter Review, Part 2, Transcription and Translation. One gene, one polypeptide. A gene is a sequence of DNA that codes for a, a protein. However, that's not always true, and we're going to explain why right now. A polypeptide is a name for a chain of amino acids chained together that could become a protein. However, there's some difficulty with this, um, this definition, and I'll explain why. If you say one gene, one enzyme, well, you really can't say that because not all proteins are enzymes, so that doesn't really work. But what about one gene, one protein? Well, most of, many times that's true. For example, insulin protein is coded for by one gene. There's one sequence of DNA that makes the one insulin protein. However, not every protein only consists of one gene. Some things like hemoglobin has four subunits, four polypeptides. So you need four different genes to code for those four polypeptide chains that come together to form the hemoglobin protein. So one gene, one protein doesn't always work. Now we have one gene, one polypeptide. Well, this is fairly close. However, you should just be aware that just saying one gene, one protein is not an absolute case. And the example would be hemoglobin, which requires many polypeptides in order to come together to make the protein, which makes means you need many genes. RNA. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. It's similar to DNA. It's thought to be the first genetic material on this planet. It can uh, make copies of itself, act as a ribozyme, uh, RNA enzyme, and it can code for genetic information for making proteins. RNA has ribose as its sugar instead of deoxyribose in DNA. The nitrogen base in RNA is called uracil, and that replaces thymine. So anytime you see thymine, you know you're not dealing with RNA. Anytime you deal with uracil, you know you're not dealing with DNA. So A normally pairs up with T. However, since there are no Ts in our uh, RNA, we replace those with Us, and that's the big difference there. Also, RNA is single-stranded. It's only one strand. DNA is double-stranded. The process of DNA making RNA is called transcription. So first, we're going to talk about transcription. Now, there's a few um, details that we're going to cover later as far as eukaryotic transcription and prokaryotic transcription. However, the general process we're going to talk about right now. The promoter region on DNA is a area of attachment for RNA polymerase. Now, prior to that, in eukaryotes, we have to have these things called transcription factors, but I'll, I'll bring those up later. RNA polymerase is the enzyme, the main enzyme, that makes RNA. DNA polymerase is the main enzyme that makes DNA. Don't get those confused, and they're, they're not too difficult to keep separate. Remember, DNA polymerase for DNA during replication, when you're making DNA. RNA polymerase during transcription when you're making RNA. So don't mix those up. The RNA polymerase enzyme binds at the promoter region of a gene, and that's the attachment point. At this point, it's going to uh, unwind the double helix, breaking those easily broken hydrogen bonds, and start adding RNA nucleotides that are complementary to DNA. Eventually, the RNA polymerase, after it transcribes the gene, will hit something called the terminator sequence. After it hits the terminator sequence, the RNA polymerase detaches and transcription is done. Remember, transcription happens in the nucleus, so let's go ahead and uh, go through the steps. In eukaryotes, transcription factors, which are proteins that turn on regions of DNA, bind to the promoter region on DNA. This doesn't happen in uh, prokaryotes, like bacteria. The second step, RNA polymerase binds to the promoter and makes the RNA by adding RNA nucleotides based on the DNA template strand elongation until a termination sequence is reached. So here we have the big old RNA polymerase. It's attaching to the template strand. The other strand is called the coding strand, and this coding strand is not actively used to make messenger RNA. However, if there's any mistakes or mutations to the template strand, we do have DNA polymerase 1 that can come in and using the coding strand fix the the broken strands of, uh, or broken nucleotides in DNA, the mutations. Here we have the uh, complementary nucleotides being brought in. Remember, nucleotides have three parts, and let's go over those three parts now. Nucleotides in DNA and RNA have a sugar phosphate backbone, and you can't see it here, but that's the backbone here, and then a nitrogen base hanging off of it. So sugar phosphate backbone, and then nitrogenous bases the three parts of a nucleotide. All right. Here we have the transcription, single-stranded RNA um, molecule being made. 
All right, here we have a transcription unit. Now in DNA, uh, we have these areas that are non-coding regions that probably have some other function as far as regulating gene expression. However, introns are not actively used in the process of translation. So what's going to happen here is we make our messenger RNA by transcription, and we're transcribing not only the exons that are coding, represented by the blue, but the introns that are non-coding. And we got to get rid of those later because they're not going to have any use for um, uh, making the proteins at the ribosome. Before we cut out the introns, we call the messenger RNA pre-mRNA. So RNA processing, what's involved? Cutting out introns and then splicing together the exons. Now, once we splice together the exons and um, have them all connected, the coding regions, there we still have uh, one more thing to do. We're going to add a 5' prime cap. Uh, the 5' prime just refers to the carbon that it's being uh, attached to. Don't worry about that and a poly-A tail, just a repeating chains of adenines. Now the purpose for these things is to protect it once it uh, leaves the nucleus. And there are enzymes out there that can break down RNA, and this kind of keeps the RNA going a little bit longer. So RNA processing, once again, cutting out introns, putting a five prime cap, and a poly-A tail. The process of putting together the exons is done by uh, splicing. And what's gonna do that splicing? Something called spliceosome. So if you hear the word splice, we're dealing with messenger RNA processing. Here's our spliceosome. These spliceosomes will pull out the introns. Here we have the excised intron, We've cut out intron. And then you see the exons being spliced together by the spliceosome. When you splice a wire, what you do is you, you um, strip the ends of the wire, then uh, twist them together and then you reconnected your wider. That's called a splice. You can do that with ropes, and here we're doing it with the exons. All right, so DNA is in the nucleus. We process our messenger RNA by cutting out those introns and putting a poly A tail and five prime cap. Then the messenger RNA is gonna leave through the nuclear pores. So transcription happens in the nucleus. The next step, messenger RNA binds to a ribosome, and then transfer RNA brings in the right amino acids to make our polypeptide. Translation happens in the cytoplasm. Here we have the genetic code. Don't forget, the genetic code doesn't use DNA, doesn't use transfer RNA, it uses only messenger RNA. So messenger RNA is what we use for the genetic code, and you have to be able to read this. Remember that a set of three in RNA is called a codon. All proteins start with the same start codon, AUG, that brings in the amino acid methionine. Stop codons, when the uh, ribosome hits it, will let the ribosome know chemically to detach, and um, translation will be done. So let's say we're trying to figure out what uh, amino acid is coded for by AUG. First base is A, second base is U, and just kind of go across to find the first base, G, methionine. The code is redundant, so there's more than one way to code for an amino acid. That's kind of a good thing because um, if you have a mutation, the mutation, uh, let's say there's a mutation to the DNA sequence that gives you, instead of an A, a G for the messenger RNA. Well, that doesn't really matter too much because it still codes for leucine. So the redundancy kind of keeps the um, amino acid sequence in the correct order for some mistakes, but not for all mistakes, of course. All right, so we have uh, DNA. This is the template strand. I'll always, always give you the template strand, not the coding strand. Here we have our messenger RNA. Complementary to T is A. A for U, not T. C for G and messenger RNA. G for C, et cetera, et cetera. I usually put a line every three just so I don't get confused. Remember a set of three RNA nucleotides is called a codon. One codon codes for one amino acid. Three nucleotides codes for one amino acid. And here we have the anticodon, UAC, which is complementary to the codon on messenger RNA, bringing in the amino acid methionine. Now remember, it's not the anticodon on transfer RNA that you use for the genetic code. If you look up UAC, it does not give you methionine in the genetic code. You use the messenger RNA. And this is happening at the ribosome. Messenger RNA is binding at the tRNA at the ribosome to bring in methionine. CGU, 
is the mesoRNA codon that's complementary to the anticodon, GCA, to bring in the amino acid arginine. And then GUA is complementary to the anticodon. This is the codon on messenger RNA, complementary to the anticodon on transfer RNA to bring in the amino acid valine. If I give you DNA, messenger RNA, tRNA, or the amino acid, you should be able to figure out everything else. Now, if I give you the amino acid, there's more than one way to get in messenger RNA and DNA to code for that, but you should be able to go back and forth between these things. All right, so can you tell the story? I'll tell the story first, and then you pause it and see if you can remember all the steps. DNA, making the messenger RNA by the process of transcription. First step, RNA polymerase binds to the promoter region. In eukaryotes, transcription factors have to bind to the promoter region first in order for the RNA polymerase to bind. It kind of tells the DNA that we have to make some proteins now. Next step, messenger RNA, complementary to the template strand of DNA, is made by RNA polymerase. That's called pre-mRNA. Spliceosomes will splice together the exons, or coding regions, of DNA and cut out the introns that are non-coding regions. A five prime cap and a poly -A tail are added. Messenger RNA leaves the nucleus and binds to one of the subunits of the ribosome, the small subunit. Large subunit kind of comes in, and then we have a complete ribosome. If you remember, ribosomes have two parts. The protein is the small part, and rRNA is the large part. So there's three types of RNA. There's rRNA, or ribosomal RNA, part of the ribosome. We have messenger RNA, which sends the codes from DNA out to the ribosome to tell the ribosome to make the protein. And then we have transfer RNA, which is located right over here. That's going to transfer in amino acids. All right, so once the ribosome binds to the uh, messenger RNA, we're going to bring in some transfer RNA. That's going to be complementary to the codons on messenger RNA. So if we have AUG here, uh, the UAC anticodon will bring in the correct amino acid. And in that case, it would be methionine. The ribosome links the amino acids together. Here we have our growing polypeptide chain, which may become our protein if it's a protein like insulin. If it's a protein like hemoglobin, this will only be making one of the four subunits that will make up hemoglobin. You don't have to know about the amino acyl tRNA synthetase. A couple more keywords here. The process of elongation can be used for describing either making a longer messenger RNA up here, or elongation also describes what's happening to make the longer polypeptide chain in the cytoplasm. Remember this area here is the cytoplasm, this area here is the nucleus, and all this is happening inside the cell. Once the stop codon is reached on your messenger RNA, the ribosome will be detached and the polypeptide is done. All right, I'm going to back it up, and let's we'll see if you can go through all the steps. All right, talk to yourself and explain what's happening. All right. DNA packing and methylation. DNA methylation uh, inactivates genes or turns them off. A methyl group is a carbon with uh, three hydrogens. So that's what methylation means, adding a carbon and three hydrogens. And basically that's going to block um, the ability of RNA polymerase to uh, even get at uh, the genes in uh, DNA. So DNA methyl methylation inactivates genes. Regulation of metabolism, feedback inhibition. So we have enzymes here. We 
make our enzymes from genes. Remember, enzymes are proteins, and proteins are coded for by genes. If we have all these enzymes in place, usually it's the last enzyme that will make a product that will bind. The product here is tryptophan, and if that binds to the first enzyme allosterically or at a place other than the active site, then it turns, down, turns off the whole metabolic pathway. This ends part two of your AP Biology Review podcast.